Well we have the man who handed out uh, the rings tonight uh, the commissioner of Major League Baseball Rob Manfred that was a lot of fun for us and I know you got a big kick out of it too. Well it's my second time at a ring ceremony as commissioner and it is one of the great baseball traditions you know you see the players faces how excited they are to get that remembrance of a great World Series victory. Um, it's just fun to be a spectator. As you look around this ballpark all the renovations what the Cubs have done on the field uh, the Ricketts ownership has done everything right and it starts at the top right I mean ultimately every healthy successful big league organization it starts at the top. Absolutely uh, Tom has done an absolutely great job I had a tour of the latest phase of the renovations uh, before the ring ceremony. Uh, what they've accomplished to preserve this great facility is amazing. That's Yasiel Puig and uh, an aggressive turnaround first, but a nice play by Jason Hayward to keep him to a single. Now Puig uh, always very aggressive, borderline reckless at times on the bases, and you, know, you got to be careful if you're going to challenge Jason Hayward. Puig just lights it up here at Wrigley Field. He's got great numbers here. So leadoff man on again. Tolls hit the home run to start the game. McCarthy bunts foul. You hear this in various forms in different sports with various franchises, but what does it mean that the Cubs are good? I would think it's really good for the game itself when one of your heritage National League franchises is doing what the Cubs have done. Well it's a huge deal for baseball you know we, we think of the Cubs victory last year is sort of what baseball can be um, when everything goes right uh, we have one of our iconic franchises play a seven game World Series against another historic franchise uh, really it, it's perfect for the game and it shows how great the game can be uh, we had audiences in the World Series just unparalleled Rizzo who tried to barehand it and almost got it. Good effort. Yeah, Rizzo is so aggressive defending the bunt. Heck of a try. Yeah, the numbers off the charts, right? And there's so many people tuned into the World Series last year, and then the reaction from the fans. You know, it's like the perfect storm, though. You, you know, 108 years, they finally win. Iconic franchise and a really appealing group of players. Um, you know, you, you, you think about all that um, Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, just as an example of two of them has, have done with us during the offseason to try to promote the game, the commercials they've made. Uh, people just naturally attracted to them. You know, I saw a lot of the WBC. Javi Baez was a real star. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, just a great star during the WBC and helped make the tournament what he what it was with that great Puerto Rican team. So, you know, they, they really do have it going here. And, you know, when you talk about leadership here, you have to talk about Theo as well. Um, you know, he really. Uh, Turned the franchise around in terms of talent acquisition and deserves all the credit in the world. Not, not too many places will the the president of the general manager get the loudest ovation. They usually <laughs> reserve it for a player or two, but it was Theo tonight. Well, you know, you, you think about it. He's such a young man still. Um, you know, his career accomplishments are pretty darn <laughs> impressive. Uh, he could probably stop right now and uh, mark it as a great career. But um, I'm sure he's going to keep going and uh, will continue to add to that great resume that he's built. So this family has crossed so many things off its list already. But with the renovations here, I think the next question is when will the All-Star game uh, return to Wrigley Field? It's been a while. Well, we let me start by not burying the headline. We, we'd love to have an All-Star game here in Chicago. Um, the fact of the matter is it is a very competitive bidding process. Uh, the Cubs, the Ricketts family has done everything we could possibly ask them to do a multi hundred million dollar investment in renovating what is truly a historic landmark. But to get to the top of the pile on the All Star game, it needs to be not only the team and the owner, the city's got to be engaged. I had a little conversation with the mayor down um, on the field that was a follow up to a conversation we had during the World Series. And um, I emphasized to him the need for the, the city and local government to be involved. And he said they're ready to dance. So hopefully it won't be too long. Tolls is 
two for two. So he's had a good night already. All right, JD. I know we, you and I have all kinds of ideas for the commissioner. So <laughs> yeah, we've uh, what always played that pace game. game? Were, what do you want to do? Well, I love the play, pace of game stuff. I, I love that you're being proactive and. and uh, uh, and, and sometimes in the face of some controversy, you're getting some pushback on it. But but um, uh, I, I love the idea of just tr trying to create more action in the game. Uh, what, what kind of feedback are you getting from the players? I know you've been meeting with players. Well, you, you know, with the players, it is going to be a process of convincing them um, that they should change some of their habits. You know better than I. Players are creatures of habits. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we're talking about do involve change. I, I like to think about it. As you know, broader than just pace a game. I like to think about it as you know, we want the product to be as entertaining as it can possibly be on the field, to give our fans action, to keep our fans engaged during the game, and we do think that um, there are changes that can be made that will will make the game better while always preserving the history and tradition of the sport. I, I think the analogy, in a weird way, stick with me here. The game is like Wrigley Field in Fenway Park, right? That you don't want to take the guts and the, the, the glory right. out of the game. You're just modernizing it, little tweaks here and there. Is that a fair assessment? You know, I may steal that Please, analogy. You, it's, actually a, to go, it, it's actually a really <laughs> good one. And I, I do think it's, it, it, it's a great way to say it. Um, you know, the other way to look at the issue is this um, you think about how the game was played 20 years ago. Um, and you think about how it's played today, the game has changed organically. So it's not like we're trying to take this static building and, you know, something like Wrigley Field and, and change it. The fact of the matter is the game's changed by itself. It's really managing the change that's already occurred. And, um, you know, some of the things that have happened that, you know, may help a team win a few more games may not be good for the sport over the long haul, and we need to think about managing that change. We've looked at YouTube videos of Hal McRae running over Willie Randolph, and that was in the 70s. We don't see those collisions anymore. Um, I don't hear anybody <laughs> arguing about the collision rule at the plate. It, it, it's worked. Well, it has worked, and, 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 you know, you have to keep your head down and go through that initial pushback. If you think about the collision rule when it first started, you know, everybody, oh, my God, we're, we're going to change the outcome of the game, and it's important that you be able to run a catcher over. Let me do what you want to do there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you get through that period adjustment, and people realize, gee, you know, they changed this rule. Our great players aren't getting hurt as frequently. And you know what? The game's still great. They didn't get to the core of it. And, and that's the sweet spot we have to keep sure. looking for. The, the one that I, that, that I kind of get a kick out of, you get a lot of pushback. And from players and others, they say, well, our game doesn't need change. We don't need real. This is a game that adopted the designated hitter. I mean, how drastic was that rule change? And <laughs> right. I don't think people even think about that anymore. Right. And, and I, I, I think that's, that, that's a great example. I think the other place to look is other sports. You know, it's absolutely clear that um, other professional sports have changed their rules that in ways that have dramatically altered their game and produced more action in their game. And that's, a, that's not an accident. Um, and as great as our game is, and believe me, nobody loves this game more than I do. I really truly love the game and could leave it alone. I just think it's important if we're going to grow the game for the next generation to think about how the game's evolving on its own and whether we need to manage that change. A little. Well you don't need me to defend you but I also think you bring up a lot of ideas that may never get implemented but the idea is to start the conversation right. Look I do believe that um, when you when you get a conversation going um, you end up with good outcomes and one of the things that I've been most encouraged about with the players is that Tony Clark saying to me you know what we may not like everything you're suggesting but we're coming with our own ideas and you know what that's a great thing they play the game they know a lot about it and I'm sure they got ideas about how to change it in ways that could be very effective and I welcome that dialogue two and one lackey. Forsyth fouls away nearing 50 pitches here in the first two innings. Yeah and I think the other part of it too from a player's point of view sometimes they're the last people to ask and I mean I know you got to deal with Tony and the Players Association. I, I think back to my playing days when you're an active major league player I mean you are living a pretty good life and, and if somebody comes along and says we need to change this you're, you're going to push back. You're right. going to say well how's it going to affect me. I, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing that the game works for me. So it's really you know, it's almost like future generations should have more input on what's yeah, going to happen. That, that, uh, but, but I know I, you got to respect 
I think you make a great point. You know, people do, you know, they're in the moment. They get dug in um, with respect to what they're doing. But I think there are certain places that we all, all ought to be able to agree um, that we can make some change without altering or harming any player. Dead time's the best example. You know, I, I think those spots in the game where nothing's happening, I mean, the intentional walk rule. Um, you know, a lot of people, believe me, I have voicemails in the office. You, you would have thought that, um, you know, I, I had committed some sacrilege. The fact Added that I'm it out to an inning or something. That's right. right. The last 1,000 intentional walks, you know how many times something happened other than the intentional <laughs> walk? One time out of 1,000, yeah. you yeah. know? I mean, yeah. it just, we're not changing the game. We're just moving it along a little bit. Three and two runners go with two outs, popped up. Looks like Rizzo will be the man. Commissioner Rob Manfred. Enjoyed this conversation very much. And again, great to have you as a part of the ring ceremony tonight. It was great to be here. Always a pleasure to be in Chicago. Thanks so much. Great to see Thanks you, sir. Sure.